Hey, I'm Andrika, and welcome to Tea Time. As you may know, we are now in the Hebrew month of Adar. It's the month of strength and laughter, and it's the month of my favorite holiday, Purim. In a few days, my friends and family are all going to gather together to read through the story of Esther and turn our attention to the fact that even when God isn't seen, He is always involved in our lives. I was reading Esther this week and thinking about how insignificant she must have felt at the beginning of the story. She had lost her parents and been taken in by her cousin Mordecai, so she was an orphan with no siblings, no grandparents. But to make matters worse, she was a Jewish girl in a Persian world. She basically had a very low social ranking. But even though she felt small and insignificant, she wasn't. God had a plan for her, and that plan was already in motion. Well, I'm a person with a lot of stuff going on. I have lots of hats to wear. And because I have lots of hats to wear, I have a lot going on in my head at any given time of the day. So I have to stop and make a conscious choice to reset and recalibrate my mind and, tr and my heart with truth. Well, for several weeks I was doing the most and I was everywhere doing everything and I had been way too busy to stop for that spiritual calibration. Well, one day I was trying to organize my craft room and I had uh, my music blasting and I was listening to a a musicals playlist and the song You Matter To Me came on from the Waitress soundtrack. And I usually skip that song because I always thought it was boring, so I would just skip it. But I was up on a step stool, I was trying to hang a picture, and uh, I had to let it play. Well, it turned out to be a pretty good song, but really I didn't pay it much mind. Anyway, while subbing one day, one of my son's friends came into class and he said jokingly, Ms. Ruiz, I don't feel like doing any work today. To which I responded, it doesn't matter what you feel like doing, sit down and open your Chromebook. I was joking too, but I got the strongest check in my spirit that I had said something wrong. And I honestly didn't know what it was. So after I got the class working on their assignment, I sat down at the teacher's desk and kind of put my head down and I asked the Lord, what? What did I do? And just like as if he was just standing next to me, I heard him say, when you said that, what he understood was that he doesn't matter. And I was like, what? That's not at all what I meant. I didn't mean that at all. And, and, I, and my heart broke a little bit. Just the idea that I could have said something to make him feel like he didn't matter just kind of wrecked me. So right there I just stopped and I repented and that was that. A few days later I woke up singing and I started singing, you matter to me. And it was weird but I just disregarded it and went on with my daily routine totally just Whatever. Wow, that's weird. Um, whatever. A couple days later, I woke up again singing the song, You Matter to Me, singing the chorus. And I was frustrated then because I didn't know the rest of the words to the chorus. So that day on the way to school, I put the song on and I was listening to the lyrics. I heard the lyric, it's addictive to let yourself think the things that I say just might matter to someone. And it caught me off, I mean, totally caught me off guard because I teared up to that lyric. And I was like, whoa, why did that lyric affect me like that? And at that point, I realized, oh, I am so overdue for that spiritual calibration session. So I dropped Judah off at school and on the way back down the mountain, me and the Lord started a conversation. And honestly, we haven't finished this conversation yet. It is an ongoing conversation that we've been having since, since January. 
But one of the first things that he revealed to me in this conversation was that I was in a battle with the enemy who was telling me that my words didn't matter. Remember, I'm a writer, so telling me that my words don't matter is very significant to who I am and my assignment on this earth. And my mind had been consumed with that lie. I needed to remember that his plans and purposes for my life are being carried out in his timing. I don't need to strive. I don't need to push. My steps are ordered. And even though I don't see the movement that I think I should be seeing, I have to trust that he is moving. All I have to do is be obedient, stand in faith, and go when he says go. Now, after the Lord revealed that to me, I felt revived and refreshed even. And I got to go on. I still had all the same stuff to do, but I had a totally new outlook. I had a new perspective because I had renewed my mind. Now, two days later, my husband and I are getting ready for a trip. And I woke up again singing You Matter to Me. But this time, I sang another, another part of the lyric. I sang, come out of hiding, I'm right here beside you. Then as I woke up and I realized I was awake, I sat up, opened my eyes and I was like, Lord, do you think that I think I don't matter? I, I think I matter. I don't know where you're getting that from. I, you, you're obviously wrong. And then I thought about it. Like, I'm going to tell God that he's wrong. Ridiculous. So I said, Lord, show me that I matter and correct my wrong thinking. A few days later, it was the day before my birthday, Richard and I left to a CMA chapter meeting in Silver City, New Mexico. And afterwards, because we were ultimately on our way to Phoenix, Arizona, we decided to stay the night in Tombstone, Arizona which was like a big deal to us, you know. I felt like I was in a Western movie and it was so cool. So we spent the night there. Early the next morning we had to get on the road because we had to be in Phoenix at a certain time. And uh, we decided we were going to walk around town. So all of the shops were still closed. All the restaurants were closed. Everything was closed. And um, it was actually good because we got to walk around and take pictures at all the famous sites and there was nobody in the way. Got to stand in the middle of the street. It was just fun. Anyway, I was walking and I spotted this painted rock and it was right next to a light post and this is the rock. It says, you matter. What? How ridiculously obvious is God sometimes? I picked it up, I showed Richard, and I was like, look, I matter. I believe it, Lord. I see what you did. You're good. You are awesome. I matter. And I was just kind of being obnoxious, and it was probably good that there were no other people on the street because Richard would have been embarrassed. Anyway, it's been over a month since I found the rock. And I'm still kind of fleshing out all of what the Lord is saying to me. But this one thing I do know, and this is the one thing I think he wants you to know as well, is that you matter. You matter to him. You are not insignificant. You have been placed here for such a time as this, and you are important to him. And you're important to the kingdom of God. So don't let the enemy get you down and don't let him bury you with busyness. Remember to stop and rest in him as you war for your destiny. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So remember, keep your heart and mind calibrated to the truth who is Jesus. Stay connected in a constant and intimate relationship with him and watch him move in your life. You matter. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Yeshua the Messiah. I'm Andrika, and I'll see you next time with another one. Bye.